Brother was sharing the question last Sunday, how prayer enters into predestination. I think it's important, loved ones, to see that God foreknows, and it's very tricky, I think, for our finite minds to get around this, but God foreknows everything that will happen in the light of the obedience and the prayers of those whom he knows will receive his spirit, and in the light of the disobedience and rebellion of those who he knows will reject and resist his spirit. So that God's foreknowledge of what is happening in the world takes into consideration the prayers that will be offered by those of us who respond and submit to his spirit. So that prayer, rather than being something that changes perhaps something that God has not foreseen, prayer is part of the activity that God foresees will be used by his Holy Spirit to bring about his will. So in a way, brother, prayer is part of what God foresees, and yet it is our free uh, action. And if we didn't pray, then in fact that would prevent him doing certain things in people's lives that he also would have foreseen and would have had to endure even though he didn't want it. So there are many loved ones who are sick uh, in our families and our circles of friends whom God wants to touch into life, but he cannot because we don't pray. And in fact, he has had to foreknow that. He knew we wouldn't pray. But the, the one activity he refuses to engage in is changing our free wills. Even though he sees that it results in an evil, the greater good of preserving the free will is more precious to him than preventing any temporary evil, even if that evil is the death of a person. Do push me, loved ones. You can only push me to a point, and then I have to express the finiteness of my miserable little mind. I'll repeat this, loved ones. Yeah. You, you prayed, you know, if, 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 if Jesus prayed in Gethsemane, if it be thy will, you know, then I will drink of the cup. But if possible, let this cup pass from me. How could Jesus, uh, knowing that this was the only way, how could he experience any hesitation? And loved ones... I think, first of all, there's an absolute difference between a rebellious, I don't want your will, I want my will. There's an absolute contrast between that and the attitude of a person saying, I want to do what you want, Lord. If there's any other way, then do it. But if this is the only way, then I'm glad to do it. And it's important to make that distinction between the prayer of Jesus and the prayer that we so often pray, I'm not going to do it. But I think then, Jim, it's important to see that that is part of the expression of the humanity of Jesus himself. In some way, loved ones, Jesus, when he came from the Father in heaven, either laid aside, or those of you theologians who know the kenosis theory and maybe hate it, either laid aside something of his divine qualities, or at least refused temporarily to use them. For instance, with the Father in heaven, he had absolute omniscience. Now, he shows by questions that he puts at times here on earth that he did not have them, that omniscience, that divine omniscience here on earth. He showed often that he had the same gift of the Holy Spirit as we have when you remember he discerned there were murmurings in their hearts. He often shows that he had that kind of discernment of the Holy Spirit. But repeatedly he asks questions that reveals that he had restrained himself from using the omniscience, that is, knowledge of all things. 
that he had with his Father in heaven. And so that is part of it, Jim, that I think Jesus, in a real way, became a human being. In a real way, put himself under the same limitations as we. And it seems to me that's part of also what comes out on the cry, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And then followed by the, 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 the declaration of faith, Into thy hands I commend my spirit. That Jesus, in a very well, real way, loved ones, suffered and endured the infirmities that we have and was a human being and yet completely divine also. This says, uh, loved ones, that there are some theologians who believe that we do not have free will, but because of the fall, really we are in something of the same situation as Skinner, you remember, would say. The the determinist psychologist would say that uh, we are not free. We are pre-programmed. We are predetermined. Loved ones, oh, God is so good, you know. He's so good and just blasting us again and again with words like Deuteronomy 30 and 19 and gets old Moses to say this, you know. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that I have set before you life and death. Blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your descendants may live. And you know what's so good? To answer Skinner and everybody else and say, why would God tell us to choose if he knows we cannot choose? If he knows we are not free to choose? And it comes out again and again in Jesus' statements, if any man wants to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. Uh, even John 3 and 16 says, For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him, any of you can who want, and you can do it if you want to. Sis, I just think that's it, you know. I think the theologian or the psychologist get themselves into the midst of determinism or overemphasis on the sovereignty of God by taking only parts of Scripture. And that's always the difficulty we get ourselves into. That in a real sense, the sovereignty of God is taught, but you cannot get away from free will. Yeah. Oh, it just comes out again and again, loved ones. Yeah. I depress you, dear ones, who have been brought up in our educational system in the past 10 or 20 years. Loved ones, there's been a, a general subtle tendency in our system to indicate Oh, what you were yesterday is what you're going to be today. And you remember Peter has a good uh, piece that uh, exposes the evolutionary philosophy that has come among us in these days. People will say, all things shall continue as they have been from the beginning. And really, that's what has got hold of so many of us. SAT is good. Great. As long as you see that God is able to work beyond and above SAT. It is not the absolute truth that because you were able to repair your bicycle when you were five year old, you absolutely ought to build a dam across the Mississippi River when you're 27 because you're a born engineer. It's just not true. No, it gives some indication, but we are free agents. And we need to see that in our educational system. God is the God of the new beginning each time the sun rises. That's why you never look at the sun and think, what an old sun. It just looks as new each day, you know. You never look each spring down and say, what old miserable green shoots coming up in my garden. (laughs) No, they're so new and fresh that you know they've come just dead new, brand new from the maker's hand that morning. And that's the Father's message to us. It is Satan's message. It is an old message. You cannot change. You cannot be different. Loved ones, you can. Jesus' word is always. You can be born anew. You can start all over again this moment if you choose. Yeah? Yeah. Dave. Good. Uh, Dave is talking about calling and uh, if God calls us 
uh, before we choose and how does he foreknow? It seems, Dave, that I think I'm right, but I might be missing your old computer mind, uh, that, uh, that God calls everybody. He calls everybody. So he calls everybody. He doesn't say, uh, Judy is going, I foresee that she's going to receive my spirit. I foresee that her husband Dan is not. So I call to Judy loudly, but I call to Dan just quietly. No, God gives the same call to all of us. He gives the same call as strongly and as loudly to all of us, but he does foreknow how we will respond. But he still does not change the, the call. Is that okay? That's right. That's right. That's right. He chooses those who are willing to receive his spirit. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. You just, loved ones, you cannot, by all kinds of uh, perversion of logic, you cannot make foreknowledge into foreordination. You cannot. You know. It just appears very like it because it's perfect foreknowledge. But it is still foreknowledge. It is God reading what the person will do. Yes. Good. Acknowledging that uh, we are free, uh, what does Jesus mean when he says those who commit sin are a slave to sin and only the Son can make them free? Uh, If we have not yielded to Jesus and we have given ourselves over to life that is independent of God, we get into certain habits, drugs, sex, uh, self-deification that enslave our souls, that is, our mind and emotions. And the scientists can prove even that there are are almost ruts in the cortex of our brains because of things that we do and do again and again and again. And Jesus is saying that no person can free themselves from that by their own activity. If I had not allowed their whole self to be crucified with me on Calvary, they would be able to do nothing. But because I have done that, they are able to turn to me and ask my Holy Spirit to make that real in them, and therefore they can be free. So, brother, it's the same situation with putting these lights on here in this auditorium. To get light in this auditorium, I go over and I just switch, actually, one of the circuit breakers, and the lights come on. But I am in no doubt that I have not generated the power that has caused these lights to light. I know that some fella back in the generating station has actually got the generators moving. I know, nevertheless, that the light will not come in unless I do switch that circuit breaker. Now, it's the same with the Father. He has replaced in Jesus a limitless source of power that has already destroyed our old self. And the moment with our little wills we say yes to him, he is able to release all that power of the Holy Spirit into us and to make us free. Yeah. Yeah. I think, Jim, I should take somebody else so that you don't monopolize. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. If you understand that God has called a person, how could you relate that to your witnessing? I think you said, sis, To an advantage, is that it? Or, uh, yes? Yes. I see, I see. How would you sense what God wants you to say to a person in the light of the fact that God is calling that person in certain ways? The Holy Spirit, who is impressing a certain kind of calling upon that person, either through the order and design of the universe or through their own guilt, can let you know which he is laying emphasis on and can guide you to come along the same wavelength. That's it. And loved ones, I'll try to take from there next day. It's, it's 12.02, so I'll try to take from that point next day. I, 
um, just relating the call of God to our response to it. Okay? Let us pray. Father, thank you. Thank you that you are so new. Thank you that joy is the center of your heart. Thank you, Lord, that you're not calling us to some miserable funeral, but to a marriage feast. You're saying to us, come and join me and my son in the beautiful family of love that we have together. Thank you, Lord. Now we pray, Father, that you will make that so real to all of us that we will see that we alone can say yes or no to it. And Lord, we pray for those whom we love that they too will say yes.